Hello and welcome back to another episode of Learn Wagtail. In this video, we are going to learn how to access a template using Ajax, and we're going to give it a specific template that can return something a little bit different specifically for Ajax requests. So before I continue, I would like to tell you what Ajax is. Ajax is asynchronous JavaScript and XML. And basically what that is, is you know when you're on Facebook and you click that like button and the page does not refresh, it just automatically updates, it says you like this post. That is all Ajax. That is basically sending data to a server and receiving data from a server without having to refresh your browser. That is what Ajax is. Now, if you don't use that kind of technology in any of your websites, if you don't use it anywhere, you have no interest in it, you don't want to write any JavaScript at all, well, then this video is probably not for you and you could probably just head on over to the next one or you can check out the rest of the playlist because there's a lot of other things that you can learn in this Wagtail series. Now, if I haven't lost you yet, that is good news. Uh, we are going to have to do a few things to get this up and running. And the first thing we're going to have to do is add a different JavaScript line. Uh, basically, right now we're using uh, jQuery 3.3.1 Slim. That does not come with Ajax support. I'll show you how to figure out if your website has Ajax through jQuery or not. If you're a JavaScript dev, you don't actually even need jQuery at all. We're just going to use it as a little bit of a shortcut since this is more of a Wagtail Python course than it is a JavaScript course. But before anything, let's open up our terminal. And uh, I'm already in my website. You can see that I'm in users, Caleb Tallinn, websites, my site. That's the name of my website. And I'm simply going to type pipenv shell. I have installed a virtual environment using pipenv, but you might be using a virtual env wrapper. Uh, you might be using Docker. Whatever you're using, make sure you get into your environment and simply manage.py run server. And I'm going to tell this to use port 8000 explicitly. All looks good. You can see that I'm using Django version 2.1.5, even though Django 2.2 is out right now. I simply have not updated yet. And we can go into our browser, type in localhost colon 8000, and that will bring us to our website. Now I'm going to go over to our super cool blog, and we are going to spend a lot of time in our inspect element. And so all I did there was I right click on the page and I go to inspect element and we can see all sorts of different things. We can see any console logs if there are any in there. We can debug. We've got a style editor. This is using Firefox, by the way. Uh, we've got performance, memory, network, storage, accessibility, and of course our HTML inspector. Today we're going to be spending a lot of time in our network. And so I already have this set to XHR, but you can see if I toggle that off, it will show me everything. So if I just refresh this, you can see that it's loading it's loading CSS from, for example, oh, uh, I clicked that. I was not supposed to click that. Scroll that down. Uh, okay, so we can see that we have a uh, file type .css. Uh, it's 225 bytes. It's basically empty. Uh, and it's just called print.css. And that's coming from localhost port 8000, but we can also see that we have something up here coming from Bootswatch, gives us the IP address, it'll give us the file here, bootstrap.min.css, the cause, it's a style sheet, the type, it's CSS, total size, and so on and so on and so on. So if you ever want to see any more, you can just right click on one of these headers here and you can disable or enable anything you like. The ones we're going to be working with are primarily status, method, domain, file, and maybe sometimes type, and that's about it. But if you head on over to your console, and let's just clear this out, I'm gonna hit Control L to clear that, and I type dollar sign dot Ajax with parentheses around it. Can I make that larger? Oh yes, I can. You can see that Ajax is not a debugger eval code. Basically, it's not defined in jQuery, it's not accessible to us at all. Now when I type dollar sign, we know that that's a jQuery selector, so that actually does work. So we know at this point that Ajax is not loaded in, inside of our jQuery file. So what we have to do, we have to open up a new tab and let's, uh, can we get one from Cloudflare? Cloudflare jQuery 3.3.1. We'll use the exact same version, but we'll use the full version. And uh, 3.3.1, although we could use 3.4, there's probably nothing wrong with that. And let's grab the whole thing here, copy the script tag, and let's head on over to our editor. Now I'm using Visual Studio Code as a free editor. 
You can use any editor you like. And all we're going to do is we're going to paste this in here. So you can see that we have slim on the top and we have the full one at the bottom. And you know it's the full one because it doesn't say slim in it. And this top line, actually, we can get rid of that entire thing. So I'm just going to delete that. And now we have jQuery 3.3.1 slash jQuery dot min dot JS. So I'm going to refresh that page, head on over back to our browser, refresh. You can see that it's going to give us a bunch of stuff in our console here. Uh, let's turn some of this stuff off. And let's do, 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 dollar sign. Well, that still works. That's good news. Dot Ajax. And that gives us something to work with. So that's how you can tell if your project is using Ajax or not using Ajax through jQuery. So I just cleared that off. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up blogmodels.py and I'm going to go down to my blog listing page. So we've got an orderable there. Uh, we've got blog author, blog category, blog listing page. And where it says template, right around the same area, it doesn't have to be below it, but right around the same area, I'm going to put ajax underscore template is equal to blog slash, uh, let's call this blog listing page ajax.html. That sounds like a horrible, horrible name. So maybe name yours better than, than how I named mine. For this purpose, this works. And then we need to go into our templates. Let's open up our blog. So we're just going to follow this. It's a template. So it goes in the templates directory blog it goes in the blog app. And then we just need a file called blog listing page ajax.html. So let's create a new file in here. I just copied and pasted that name and there's absolutely nothing in there. Now, all I'm going to do for this, just to begin, is I'm just going to throw the word hello world. And this is a test, just so that we can get this up and running fairly quickly without adding any additional complexity. We're just going to take the step by step. So I go back to here, and we are going to want to Ajax a specific page. Now, fortunately, Wagtail, Django, and jQuery all play together very nicely. So all I did was I went up to this URL bar, I copied the entire thing, which should, yep, give me HTTP in there as well. You're going to need that. And I'm going to type dollar sign dot Ajax, and as a string, I'm going to throw in the current URL. And this is just the blog. This is only going to work for the blog listing page. Now, the reason that only works for blog listing page is because in our blog models.py, we have specified an Ajax template in here. Now this Ajax template is using a specific template that we told it to use. So that's why this is going to work for us. So now I go back to my inspector and I'm just going to hit enter. And we're going to see that this seemingly worked. So this gave us an XHR. That's fancy talk for Ajax. And we can see when we click on it, we have headers, cookies, parameters, response. Uh, let's take a look at our headers, what we're sending off here. Pretty basic stuff, nothing nothing crazy in there. Uh, if you don't know what all this stuff is, guess what? That's okay. You don't actually need to know. Cookies. What kind of cookies are we sending? Well, we're sending a CSRF token automatically. That's good news. Uh, are we sending any parameters? Apparently not. And let's take a look at the response. And the response is, hello world, this is a test. So even though we're loading this page on our browser using a non-Ajax request, we can still Ajax this page and get something completely different. And again, just to show you, that command is dollar sign dot Ajax, and then as a string, you just put in your URL. Now, as an experiment, what you can do is you can get rid of this blog and you can see what happens when you do an Ajax request on your homepage or any other page and see how that works. You can dig into the code and sort of figure it out from there. Otherwise, you can stick with this example that we're doing together here. And again, if I just hit enter and just click into it, this will show me everything I need. So that's pretty cool. And I'm just going to refresh this, sort of clear that out. But we actually want to show something in here. Now, do we have contacts in here? Any custom contacts? Yeah, we do. We've got pages and stuff, so we can send a page parameter if we wanted to. Let's simply loop through the posts. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create a for loop for post and posts, post.title. 
and four. And that is literally all we're going to do. So let's open up terminal, not our terminal. I guess it's our browser's terminal in a sense, our console. And this still works and go to our response. And we see we've got a video blog article and an article blog page. So this is actually starting to show something for us. And the really nice thing is that Wagtail and Django are going to render all of this as HTML for us. So you don't have to worry about JSONifying anything and, and writing JSON uh, and accessing JSON rather in your JavaScript. You can just let Django and Wagtail basically render out this entire template for you and insert it into your page. So let's go ahead and let's create an example. We've got an H1 in here and let's throw that post title in the H1 and let's add a paragraph. And what is that paragraph going to be? So this is coming from posts. We know that's going to be a blog detail page, blog detail page. Uh, we've got a custom title. So maybe we should actually use that instead. Let's use custom title. We can see that's a mandatory field. Blank is false, null is false. And uh, do, 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 do. what else do we have in here? A uh, subtitle. Let's check to see if it even has a subtitle. So now we can do some logic in here as well. So we can do if post dot subtitle, if there is a subtitle. And although that looks right, uh, we actually want not dot subtitle, dot specific. Specific. Now, if you're wondering, Caleb, what is dot specific? And if, one sec, I'll just finish this up here. Dot specific means because all of our blog posts, we can see posts, where were we here? We've got posts in here. Where are you grabbing all the posts from? blog detail page. So let's head on over to our blog detail page. And we can see that we have a regular blog detail page, but there is no subtitle in here. We've got custom title, banner image categories, and stream fields. That's it. If we go to an article blog page, we can see that it's inheriting that blog detail page. And it's also extending it with another class called another not another class, another property called subtitle. It also has an intro image and some other stream fields. And let's go down to our video blog page. Again, same thing, it's inheriting that blog detail page, but this one doesn't have a subtitle. This one has a video ID for a YouTube video. So what specific is saying is basically we're grabbing all of the blog detail pages. We're grabbing all of these guys. And because we're grabbing all of these, we're getting all the child pages as well, all the children. And to get more specific, to grab a specific child property, we just have to type dot specific. So we can see that there is some logic in here. If post.specific.subtitle, let's show that post.specific.subtitle. And I'm just gonna leave it at that for now. And I'll refresh this page just to clear that console. I'll click in there and then I'll press the key up, just the up arrow, and that will bring me back to my last command. Hit enter and we can see it still looks okay. And let's check, oh, here we go. We've got a response in here. So we've got title one, custom article blog page title. And it says the subtitle is no longer cached. So that was from our caching lesson. Uh, we actually, we've got two titles in here. So we can see the exact payload in here. So we have uh, the response payload. That's exactly what was coming back from the server. So we have title one, it didn't have a subtitle. And then we had another title in here called custom article blog title. And that one actually has a subtitle. Now at this point, if you're thinking, well, Caleb, where on earth would I ever use this? That's a great question. You know when you have endless scrolling pages, you're on a blog page and instead of pagination, you just you get to the bottom of the page and it just automatically loads more blog posts for you. This is where you would use something like that. Or if you wanted to create more of a single page application or a progressive web app, you could also instead of having actual buttons that for example, this one will go to question mark page is equal to two. Instead of doing that, you can automatically load things into your page. It's a little less awesome for SEO, but it's really cool for user experience. Now there's one more thing that I did not add in here and I purposely left this one out. I did not add some sort of event listener. This is not going to trigger on its own. And the reason I left that out is because I don't know what your application is going to want. There are several different ways we can do this. We can simply watch to see if someone scrolls down the page and gets towards this pagination area and automatically load more blog posts. We could create a button in here that says load more so it doesn't automatically load more depending on the user experience that you're going for or the, the user interface that you have designed. Or maybe it's simply set on a timer. 
every two minutes it rotates. You could use that on, for example, an advertisement page. So those are just a couple of examples of where you could use this. There are a lot more out there. You can Ajax basically anything that a server can return to you. It's, it's actually a really nice world to live in. But the problem is that it does add a little extra maintenance to your project. So instead of just maintaining one blog listing page, you're now maintaining a blog listing page, a little bit of JavaScript to get more details from that page, and also the blog Ajax listing page. And by blog Ajax listing page, I actually meant the template file itself. So this file. Now I'm going to leave this here. I'm going to purposely leave this lesson dangling a little bit because I don't know your specific needs. But if you do need a little bit of help with it, you can always check out Stack Overflow for any sort of jQuery or JavaScript event listeners. There's a plethora of knowledge out there that can get you up and running with a JavaScript event listener, basically by copying and pasting and changing out the URL. So again, because this is not a JavaScript course, we're not going to go over that. However, if you have watched this entire video, chances are you know a little bit of JavaScript and you know about Ajax already. So I probably don't need to go over that anyways. Now that's this whole lesson. Of course, you can find all the code in a git commit. The link will be in the description down below. My name is Caleb Tolley. I am the voice behind this video. If you like this video and you want more, you can always check out learnwagtail.com. Of course, you can always access the docs on docs.wagtail.io. And hey, if you like this video, don't forget, you can share, you can subscribe, you can comment, or you can binge watch the entire playlist. I have it linked up right in front of you. All you have to do is click that rectangle on the right side of your screen. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you in the next video.